this content is for kids. It's not for kids. No, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If you return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sen vs. the World. I'm Septum Sen. I'm here with Kotobuki J. Hi. And we're here to show you what they got. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple of things before we get started. Of course, the uh, normal no Gundam. But we do have quite a bit this week. I am not going to, if you noticed on Monday, I usually do a. Um, stroll through my collection. Mm -hmm. I also usually put the kitten up too. And I'll be doing that while he presents on his in a minute. But this week has been a, a rough one. Mm -hmm. Weekend's been a rough one, I should say. So we'll pick up with the strolls next week. So with that being said, let's show you some of that beautiful DVD footage. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Speaking of beautiful stuff, why don't you go ahead and tell them a little bit about it while I lock Mr. Trouble up. <laughs> so, um, the first one I'm going to present, I'm going to lead off this week with the, uh, that way, the two 
Criterion selections that are coming out. And the first, well, one of the two, <laughs> is a film from 1968 starring Terrence Stamp called Teorema. Teorema is directed by Pier Paolo Pasolini, who, of course, is a very famed and well known, well respected director writer, poet, novelist. <laughs> Dude is, uh, I don't know, I was just looking this up and I, I feel like this guy's backstory in life might be more interesting than any movie he did. Apparently he, uh, he owned a castle. <laughs> he was conscripted into the Italian army in 18, 1943 and a few days after Italy's capitulation, his regiment was captured by the Germans. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Apparently he was the son of a soldier who became famous for saving Benito Mussolini's life. Of course, Pasolini himself was apparently very anti-fascist. But just, I mean, all this stuff. And then to make it all of it more interesting, he was murdered. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny, but it's like, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. This guy, I'm not so, I'm surprised there isn't like a Oscar winning movie about him already, you know. But, <laughs> but at any rate, Teorama is one that I've heard about. It sounds interesting. Uh, IMDb says a mysterious young man seduces each member of a bourgeoisie family. When he suddenly leaves, how will their lives change? <laughs> um, yeah, so it sounds interesting. Um, <clears throat> and since he's since he's um kind of tied up, and I have one more this week, I'll go ahead and mention the other Criterion release. It's called Antonio Gaudi. It's from nineteen eighty four. And it's a documentary from Japanese director Hiroshi Teshigahara. <clears throat> Godi is a Catalan architect. And that's, frankly, most of the info I have on that one. Um, could be interesting. And certainly as a Criterion uh, release, it is on my list. And to you. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, we've been looking through different series that have had reboots in the last uh, so for many mm -hmm. years. And one such series that had a reboot in their anime is Hunter x Hunter. Mm -hmm. And they've managed to take this new series and they go to 148 episodes, which takes it up past to the end of the um, uh, Mantis Ant, something like that, mm -hmm. uh, arc. And uh, then they ended up stopping again. <laughs> mm. So they got further than the last series, which, right. I think, which got to Green Island, and that was it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool to see that. Uh, Hunter Hunter is a fun series. It's uh, sort of a it's a shonen series about a younger uh, boy who's pretty powerful in his own mm -hmm. right, similar mm -hmm. to Goku in a lot of ways, and his journeys to be a hunter, which is sort of like an adventure of sorts. Right. And. Uh, they're coming out with a volume seven, which will be the last volume in the series. It's a hmm. good series. I need to dig into it again, and uh, I also uh, need to dig into the movies because there were some movies that were also out with that, and I've got all of those. So all I'm missing is that last set, and mm -hmm. I'll have that complete series. Good times. Yep. All right, so last year put out quite a few good movies. Um, you know, we, we spent a few hours looking at those last night on uh, Oscar night, but not all, uh, of course, not all good movies got nominated, and a lot of movies kind of fell by the wayside. But one that caught my attention, I saw the preview for this, and I'm like, this looks pretty good, and it's got a pretty, a pretty awesome pedigree behind it is a crime drama, mystery drama, uh, called The Good Liar. Uh, 
hmm. that co-stars uh, Helen Mirren and Ian McKellen, <laughs> and also features Downton Abbey's Jim Carter in a key supporting role. And it's writ- it's directed by Bill Condon, who of course directed uh, McKellen in The Wonderful Gods and Monsters. So I'm very intrigued by this, uh, just from the pedigree, it's worth a watch. But also it sounds kind of interesting. Consummate con man, Roy Courtney, has set his sights on his latest mark, the recently widowed Betty McLeish, who is worth millions. But this time, what should have been a simple swindle escalates into a cat and mouse game with uh, ultimate stakes. That does sound fun. So I will seek this one out eventually. Definitely. (laughs) Well, Jordan Peele made waves with the great horror film Get Out. Mm -hmm. And of course, again, with his Twilight Zone-like film... Mm-hmm. Us. Mm-hmm. And he will be going again with Antebellum. And, I believe, a Candyman reboot. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he got a gig hosting the new iteration of The Twilight Zone. Mm-hmm. And the first season of that <laughs> is coming out. <laughs> so if you don't want to buy the CBS All Access to see it, this is your shot. Mm. And they've been pretty good about producing their stuff. I mean, they got Star Trek Discovery out. Right. So I'm kind of glad. They've been kind of mm, reviews. Hmm. But mostly good. So Mm. I want it. Who knows when I'll get it. But it's on my list. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, another film that kind of fell by the wayside that seemed like it maybe was making a stab at some awards consideration, but... Given that it was from Roland Emmerich, you can only expect but so much. Uh, You can expect a lot of destruction and chaos and things getting destroyed and blowed up and, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, And I'm talking about the film Midway, which of course was about the Battle of Midway. Pretty big event in uh, World War II. And you've got a really incredible uh, assortment of people in this cast. Ed Screen is the co- is the star of the film as the unfortunately named Dick Best. Uh, but you also have Patrick Wilson, Woody Harrelson, Luke Evans, Mandy Moore, Dennis Quaid, Aaron Eckhart, Nick Jonas of all people, Darren Chris, uh, Jun Kunimura, uh, etc., etc., etc. There's a whole lot of people in that one, but... Mm-hmm. Just some of those people are pretty incredible uh, individuals, and just that assortment amuses me somewhat. But, and like I said, Emmerich's films are usually not high art, but they're usually pretty entertaining. And I'm pretty sure the band can make a solid war film. Uh, it is two and a half hours long, so that cuts down a little bit on my enthusiasm, but still... Uh, I'll give it a go one of these days, and it's certainly worth mentioning. Hmm? So, the next one is something I actually knew about a while back, because Mm -hmm. the studio Paramount sent a copy of this to What Movie One to review. Ah. Lucky man. Yeah. And that is the Avatar, The Last Airbender, Mm -hmm. 15th Anniversary Steelbook. For the series, not the movie. You got a free copy of that? That's, you got a free copy. That's pretty cool. Now, the way it looks, I mean, you mm-hmm. can only tell from the picture a little bit, mm-hmm. is it's got this wrap around it. I'm not sure if the wrap around is metal, but it definitely is embossed. Right. And it has the steel books of each of the three books. Huh. Doing so, I mean, like, I've got the original releases for the DVD. Like, there's the Book of Air, so they would have a right. thinner steel book of that. Right. Now, by the way, the set is bigger than the three together here so you're not going to save space this is all for looks it's like oh it is bigger yeah it's like you know how the marvel steelbook collection is where they got like kind of a space in between each uh, one yeah i think so or the harry potter one where they did that too oh like yeah that, yeah it's it's like that it looks like that see and there's the other book here which is uh i believe earth and then of course fire which is the last one and I don't mind my copies. I have debated upping it to Blu-ray. I did up Core, I believe, to Blu-ray. 
Hmm. Or was it DVD? I can't remember whether I got one. Legend of Korra is the sequel series. I know I upped it to the uh, singular, so I may have done that Blu-ray, which I should have if I did. Hmm. And uh, this one eventually needs the upgrade. I don't know if I'm going to pay the money for the uh, anniversary still book. Because, <laughs> again, why do I need to take up more room than I already have? I'd rather take up less room with some but other Blu-rays. But it'll look cooler. It will definitely look cooler. <laughs> So, again, if you want that, it is there. It's an awesome series. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's one of the better American animated series. Well, mm -hmm. technically Korean animated, but American uh, as well. American mm -hmm. release. Yeah. yeah. So, very, very excellent stuff right, right. there. And I hate to admit it. I really do. But I cannot swear to it that I have Avatar. I know I have Legend of Korra. Legend of Korra is good. <laughs> yes, it is. And I would love to have the steel books. Okay, speaking of things that are in all probability going to be more expensive than they're necessarily worth, uh, this week sees the release of another I got on DVD. relatively acclaimed anime, actually highly acclaimed anime, that unfortunately, Anaplex of America got their mitts on it, so <laughs> who knows what will come of this. But it's a series called Kaguya-sama Love is War. And it's considered sort of a romantic dramedy. Um, the basic uh, premise here, according to ANN, Kaguya Shinomiya and Miyuki Shiragane are two geniuses who stand atop their prestigious academy student council, making them the elite among elite. But it's lonely at the top and each has fallen for the other. There's just one huge problem standing in the way of lovey-dovey bliss. Mm -hmm. They're both too prideful to be the first to confess their romantic feelings and thus become the loser in this competition of love. <laughs> So it actually doesn't sound like the most unique premise I've ever heard. But I like the art style. The series does have good rankings overall. It is considered a good series. And Anaplex has a pretty decent track record with not releasing crap. The problem is, as we have said many times, the actual physical releases are almost never worth the ticket price. Yeah. If they would give us something like what NIS did or what Bandai tends to do with their very few releases or even what Funimation is doing with their bare bones limited editions, those are nicer than your typical yeah. Anaplex release. <sighs> so this is one I will not be jumping on right away, but it is <laughs> on my radar. Yeah, most of them I won't be jumping on right away. <laughs> They're probably going to get the new Puella series that's coming out. Oh, Magia Record? Yeah. But I saw Funimation streaming it, but I don't that know where it's... Well, I know, yeah. but I don't know where it's going from there. Because um, Funimation streams a lot of yeah. the Fate stuff, too, but that doesn't right. mean anything. Hmm. Uh, but um, next up on the list, Kino's Journey, A Beautiful World, is getting an hmm. Essentials release. So finally, nice. when I get paid again, I'll probably get it. Because it's cheap enough that I would be willing to do it. And because it's essential. It is essential. <laughs> I don't... I think the original is definitely oh, essential. Yeah. But this one, I've heard so many mixed mm -hmm. feelings about. That it's good, but mm -hmm. it's not as good as it could be. Well, apparently they did a fan poll where the fans decided which stories would be in the new series. But the producers apparently did not work hard enough to create a cohesive storyline out of that. Oh. And that's, yeah. So it felt very episodic then. Yeah, well, the first one was episodic, but it still had that sort well, of... It flowed very it well. It flowed really well. And they had one episode... Well, there were two episodes that were clearly a-chronological. Because the one that introduces yeah. Kino as a child was, what, the fifth episode? It was later And on, then yeah. you had the final episode was clearly one that happened early in the series. But putting that at the end, mm -hmm. oh man, that was a good choice. You know, you know what would be essential as a release, Funimation? Mm -hmm. The original series plus all of the missing content 
that we have been wanting for a while. It has at least mm -hmm. it has an OVA and a does it have a movie as an O? There were at least three OVA yeah. episodes. Yeah. So you know, Funimation, get on that. Well, Sentai I think still holds that license, but you know, one of them needs to get. Yeah, on that. I mean. How many times has the original been re-released ah, without but, those episodes? I know. And yet I still hold on to the original <laughs> physical release because there's no new content. Right. <laughs> ah, get on ah, it. Yes, yes. Get on it. No. Is it my go? Hmm? Okay, so speaking of uh, old, older content than some of the stuff we're talking about... This one's actually reaching way back into the past. We have a release coming out this week called Tex Avery Screwball Classics Volume 1. I cannot claim to be enormously schooled in the works of Tex Avery, but I do know some of them. This is some old school yeah. animation from back in the day. We were all introduced to them as a kid. Yeah. I mean, Droopy Dog, for goodness sake. I know. Yeah, and Droopy, I always found him mildly amusing, you mm -hmm. know, but he, he he was such a mild mannered character. Tex Avery was a very was a was a very important figure in mm -hmm. American animation. Mm -hmm. Yes, and anything that brings some of those old ones out on physical release, I'm always for that. Yep. A lot of them did not age as well as we would like, oh, God and. No. Um, <laughs> But they're still interesting, and they, they're a good uh, snapshot into the past, for better and for worse. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to look on the past like that, because mm -hmm. when you look on the past and you let people know with these disclaimers, and Disney has done this with Disney+, mm -hmm. Plus, mm -hmm. but some of their older stuff, they actually have these little disclaimers and people actually talking about it at the beginning to explain this is not how things are now, but this is how they were viewed last then, back then. So it's not right what they're doing, but understand the context. Here you go. And that's good. I think that's how it should be. So do you think this will lead to them actually getting up the nerve to put out Song of the South again? See, to me, it, it <laughs> angers me that Song of the South is being ignored. Because by not releasing it, they're basically trying to pretend it doesn't exist. Yeah. It does exist. It is historical. It does exist. And it's... To me, it's important. I mean, they've released Birth of a Freaking Nation. And that is a racist, inaccurate tale. Yeah. Depending on who you ask, I guess. Well, but I it, think it pretty clearly, yeah. I don't know. There's some people that might look at that as, no, that's perfectly accurate. Uh, some these people days. are wrong. <laughs> I didn't say they were right. I just, well, maybe. Uh, but, you know... It is still America's first feature film. Yeah, for better or worse. For better or for worse. Yeah. It's still important to show. And giving that explanation to people mm -hmm. ahead of time, mm -hmm. letting them know, that way they don't get the wrong idea. Mm -hmm. They say, we don't support this, but, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that actually makes makes a step in the right direction. Yeah. So, I would... S well, speaking of older animated features, mm -hmm. Star Blazers 2199... Space Battleship Yamato is getting a release, yeah. or the complete collection, and that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm hoping to see all of that. It's, a, it's an important series. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll ever get to it, but it is one that I need to get to. Mm -hmm. It is a historically important anime, mm -hmm. so it's definitely there. And, you know, everybody, most everybody who knows anime has heard of the Battleship Yamato, mm -hmm. uh, if anything. <laughs> All right, and my last one is the film that, in a wonderful alternate reality universe that we do not live in, w uh, won the Oscar for Tom Hanks for playing our dearly beloved uh, Mr. Rogers, but in this reality he lost to someone who was interloping in the wrong category. Uh, and I'm speaking, of course, of the film A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Uh, Marielle Heller directed film. Uh, that was one putative snub right there. Wonderfully 
camera, wonderfully filmed, wonderfully acted. Matthew Reese plays a uh, self-important uh, reporter mm. with a very awful uh, relationship with his father, uh, who's played by a wonderful, understated Chris Cooper. Uh, and he is tapped, pretty much forced, to do a short puff piece, if you will, on Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and who is played, of course, by the incomparable Tom Hanks. And he gets drawn into this world that, in his cynicism, he had pretty much forgotten was even possible. <laughs> and uh, it's just a wonderful film, really uplifting. Just I had a huge goofy smile on my face for most of the movie. <laughs> it was a good film. Um, it was just really good. And again, I, I think Hank should have won. The film should have been up for more awards. But it is coming out this week, so you can get it yourself for your own collection. And I certainly will be looking for it. Maybe not right away, but I will be getting this one. It is a good good film. So, mm -hmm. last one for me is a, um, I guess, it's another piece of a series. That's a eight-part series, I think. Yep, I was looking over to it. I believe so. And uh, this series has been really, uh, produced by Sentai. It's called Space Brothers. This is volume zero, which is a movie, by the way. And uh, it's about these two brothers uh, who kind of go in different paths and different directions until something brings them both back together. That's essentially the whole of uh, the basics of the series. I have not seen it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I need to see it. Series. But it's very well known. Yeah. I mean, I got one of those dirt cheap for all mm -hmm. eight volumes. It's amazing how uh, <laughs> yeah. how that goes. And uh, I'll wait until a sale, but I will be getting it because I mm -hmm. want to complete. Yeah. And then maybe uh, two or three years later, you'll watch the whole thing. <laughs> Mayhaps I don't go. I don't go alphabetically like you do. So you never know. I well, might get I it sooner than later. It depends with me. I mean, it really because that would put you very long down the line at DVD. Yeah, the thing is, I'm so freaking far behind on DVD. I'm not really going alphabetic. <laughs> I'm just restricting myself. All to I know, the, you know. All I know is that if I'm doing one that I haven't watched before, I'm making progress in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm trying to look at it more that way. But anyway. Um, all right, well, that was everything, wasn't it? That's it. So all if right, you want cool. more poignant Oscar discussion, oh, yeah. you'll hear from us more about the winners of, uh, well, last night's, mm -hmm. even though this is going to be Tuesday that this is up, uh, <laughs> night before last. Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. We'll let you go through all of the other analysis first until you hit the right analysis at the end. The correct. That is correct, Alex. So we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.